Hello, it's Scott Manley here. In the last 24 hours, they have discovered another coolant leak in the Russian segment of the International Space Station. This is in one of the radiators on the recently installed Nauka, our multipurpose lab module. And more specifically, it was on the external radiator which was added during a spacewalk earlier this year. And that spacewalk, if you remember, was the one that they were planning when they called it off because there was a leak in Soyuz MS-22. Now this leak doesn't appear to be nearly as dramatic as that Soyuz leak. Uh, the Soyuz one we could see on the video feeds from the space station. Uh, for this one, we've seen a couple of photos and frankly, it's hard to see if there's anything going on. But the crew on the station have confirmed that they can see the snowflakes coming out of this. And uh, you know, there's been messages from Mission Control and uh, statements by Roscosmos to confirm that there is a leak and that things are currently working fine, but uh, they are monitoring the situation. Now, there are actually multiple radiators mounted on Nauka. When it launched, there were a number of radiators on the surface, and these provide some heat dissipation. This a big one that sticks out, that was the one that was added long after launch. But this radiator had actually spent over a decade on orbit before it was actually used. It was launched on the space shuttle back in 2010. This was on STS-132, and it was part of the RASVET module. Now, NASA was carrying this because they owed Russia a space launch, and Russia had, while they had built some of the core modules of the space station and launched them on Proton rockets, they were actually paid for by the US and Russia launched them. So, because Russia launched its own module, they were apparently owed a flight of hardware on the space shuttle, and they wanted to launch some cool big, like, power module for the International Space Station, but they just didn't have the money. So at the last minute, they threw together this little module called RASVET, which included the radiator, which would be later attached to the Nauka module. This was back when Russia expected Nauka to launch within a couple of years, but because the space shuttle was retiring, they had to put something on the space shuttle, and so they put some extra bits and pieces that would be required. So yes, there was the radiator, there was also the experimental airlock, which was mounted on the side of RASVET and stored there again for like a decade. And on spacewalk number 57, that was when the cosmonauts moved the airlock over and installed it on the Nauka module. And now it can be used to launch experiments or, you know, dump garbage if they need to do that. These were, of course, quite complicated EVAs as these things go. Uh, like, it took 12 spacewalks to actually outfit Nauka completely, and of course they needed the European robotic arm to perform a lot of these movements of large pieces of hardware. So it took one uh, EVA to move the radiator across from Rasvet to Nauka, uh, and then there was a, a later spacewalk where they had to go out and connect the nitrogen the, and the ammonia lines and actually deploy the radiator, and that was when it began working. That was uh, in May of this year. So now, with the new radiator installed, Russia could finally bring their lab module up to full power. Casual observers of spaceflight frequently uh, neglect how important thermal control is. Like, power is a big deal, that's what all those solar panels are for. Life support's a really big deal for people, but thermal control is important for the mission in general because the components will always have to stay within a certain temperature range, and that includes electronics and people. And everything you might do in a space station is generating heat. Your body is generating heat. When you're running a computer, it is generating heat. Any electronics, that's generating heat, and you need to be able to get rid of that. And that's hard in space, where you don't really have an atmosphere to dump uh, the heat into. So you can only use thermal radiation, you know, black body radiation, and that means that you need big surface areas. Those big panels are exposed to the blackness of space, so that any photons that they give off disappear, carrying heat away with them. To get the heat into those panels, you have cooling loops, right? You have loops of liquid that run inside a heat exchanger, carry that out to the panels, and then run back into the heat exchanger. And when you lose the fluid, you have almost no way to get the heat from inside the spacecraft to those panels, so they're effectively not working. Now, as I understand it, there may actually be multiple independent cooling loops in these panels, or it might be the failure only affects one of the three segments. It's not clear right now, because partly not revealing a lot of information, and secondly, some of the information is in Russian, which I don't really speak very well. 
the leak may be small. They may be getting good performance right now, but they are looking at a progressive degradation of the performance of the cooling system. So Russia may reprioritize some experiments to account for this. And they might seriously consider a repair. The previous two leaks on the Soyuz and the Progress, those weren't repaired because those spacecraft were expected to return to Earth anyway. This piece of hardware is going to stay in space and it's actually going to be quite difficult for them to get a replacement. Any potential replacement would have to come on a spacecraft that's able to carry it. And it looks like it would be external cargo. Now, it's possible that something uh, could be made to fit inside the trunk of the Dragon or in the vacuum area of the H2 cargo vehicle, but that would require Roscosmos uh, essentially asking for help or even paying for help and dealing with the, the politics, which is, of course, going to be a bit of a problem right now. Running fewer experiments on their science module than expected isn't exactly going to destroy Russia's reputation for spaceflight in the same way that, say, having their crew spacecraft leak in space while one of the crew members was actually uh, from NASA. You know, it's a totally different world here. And then let's not forget that the Naoka module was the one that docked to the space station, and as they were trying to integrate it, it uh, decided to start firing its thrusters and drove the space station into several backflips before they finally disconnected the thrusters and got the whole thing back under control. Now, the current leadership at Roscosmos will be somewhat insulated from this problem because the hardware is so old. It was built a long time before they were running the show. But I think that they might actually consider attempting to repair it on orbit. That would actually be something that would be new, original, and would, you know, uh, demonstrate Russia does actually have quite a lot of power and skill in spaceflight. The panels, as I said, they can't be returned. They're not replacing them. It would make sense for them to attempt to repair. It might be as simple as simply patching up uh, a loop with, you know, equivalent of flex tape in space. We know that based on the previous spacewalks that they were in fact able to fill up the panels with uh, the coolant once they were sitting in space. So I think refilling a drain system would be viable. And yeah, since nobody has done anything like this before, uh, the consequences of failure aren't quite as bad as messing up something that everybody else has been able to get right. So I won't be surprised if after they you know, make their initial contingencies that they actually decide to perform a spacewalk to repair this. But again, this is all speculation based on very limited information that's coming out right now. There is also the question of how this affects the rest of the space station. When this material is flowing around, there is a chance that it will recontact the station. So uh, in the international segment, they've closed the shutters on the Coppola module because you don't want to have the coolant forming a layer and potentially uh, affecting visibility or even you know, affecting the science you might get from taking pictures through this. There are other scientific instruments that are you know, they're going to be exposed to space and you really don't want those getting contaminated. If the leak disappears very quickly because it drains out like on MS-22, that might be better than, say, if you've got a very slow rate of leakage that uh, is persistent over a long period of time. You can you could stop the science with MS-22 for long enough for the thing to drain out. But if you get a slow leakage contaminating the station environment for months on end, that would be a whole different affair. I'm sure we'll get a, more updates in coming weeks, but for now, yeah, there is a leak in the space station cooling system. It's not threatening astronauts. At worst, it's threatening the science output for the space station. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.